The U.S. Navy proposed a new multi-purpose carrier-based helicopter development plan in 1956, requiring a compact structure and all-weather mission capability. Eventually, the K-20 designed by Kaman Aircraft Company was selected and received the official order from the Navy. The K-20 was later known as the SH-2 Sea Sprite. Kaman Company was established in 1945, mainly engaged in the research and production of helicopters, and had a certain position in the field of helicopters. The SH-2 designed by the company was also very unique in technology, with most models used until the 1990s, and some new models still in service today. The SH-2 features a fully metallic semi-rigid shell fuselage, with a front end similar to the UH-1 helicopter, side-by-side -side seating for the pilot and co-pilot, and a passenger cabin that can accommodate up to 11 passengers or 4 stretchers. The landing gear is of the rear three-point type, and the front main landing gear can be retracted into the fuselage. The fuselage has waterproof capabilities and can take off and land on calm water surfaces. The fairing at the front of the aircraft can open left and right and fold back, reducing the space occupied in the hangar, making it suitable for smaller surface ships. The helicopter is powered by a General Electric T-58 turboshaft engine, with a four-bladed main rotor and a small four-bladed tail rotor to adjust flight attitude. The main rotor of the SH-2 is unique, with movable flaps installed on the trailing edge of the rotor blades, controlled by the pilot to reduce the hydraulic power required for rotor control, a design that is quite rare. The SH-2 is relatively small, with a main rotor diameter of about 13.4 meters and a folded length of about 15.85 meters. The maximum takeoff weight is 5,670 kilograms, and the maximum range is about 680 kilometers. Sliding cabin doors on both sides of the fuselage allow for additional fuel tanks to be carried inside the passenger cabin to increase range. The single-engine version of the SH-2A entered service in the 1960s, but the Navy realized that using a twin-engine helicopter would significantly improve performance without adding too much burden. As a result, Kaman was requested to develop a twin-engine version of the Sea Sprite, leading to models such as the UH-2C and HH-2D. The main rotor and tail rotor of the helicopter remained unchanged. For example, in the case of the Kaman SH-2F, after the power was reinforced, the empty weight increased to about 3,200 kg, but the maximum takeoff weight increased to 6,000 kg. The cruising speed reached 265 km per hour, with a maximum range of 680 km and a maximum altitude of 6,900 m, resulting in a significant improvement in overall performance. Shortly after entering service, the SH-2 helicopter was deployed to Vietnam as a carrier-based aircraft for aircraft carriers and escort vessels, mainly performing fleet surveillance, general transport, and the important task of rescuing downed pilots. Throughout the Vietnam War, the SH-2 successfully rescued over 100 people. The Americans also attempted to arm the SH-2, such as installing a turret on the front of the aircraft and weapon pylons on both sides of the fuselage. For example, the SH-2F was equipped with small weapon pylons on both sides of the fuselage, capable of carrying two torpedoes or Little Bull missiles for anti-ship and anti-submarine operations. However, the true value of the SH-2 series of helicopters lies not in armed combat. The U.S. military planned to develop dedicated armed helicopters and equip armed versions of the UH-1 helicopter. The advantage of the SH-2 is its small size, allowing the same carrier hangar space to accommodate more helicopters. With smaller surface vessels unable to accommodate the S-60, Seahawk, and no other suitable models available, the SH-2 had to be used as a stopgap solution. The newer models of this helicopter series include the SH-2G, developed in the mid-1980s. The US military deployed it on smaller Knox-class frigates and early Perry-class frigates. In the early 21st century, these helicopters were completely retired, but a few countries, including Egypt and Poland, made small purchases. 
Egypt also purchased several second-hand helicopters from the US as spare parts.